Hi, in this screencast, we're going to look at a technique that I use to make my Whittle scripts more readable. It's totally optional, but I use it frequently, so I thought I would include it at this point in the course before we start chaining a bunch of tasks together and get really long scripts. So it's pretty simple. You look at this example here. You can see it's a Hello World script. We have our typical task in lines 8 through 18. Notice, though, in lines 4 and 5, rather than calling our task once, in this Whittle script, we alias it so we can call it twice. Now, this is a little bit artificial because like I said, I often use this to break apart or refactor really long Whittle scripts into separate scripts, but this starts to get us thinking about the concept. So there are other ways we can apply this. Let's think about those ways. So when we think of working with Whittle scripts running on Cromwell, I'm just gonna show this on my GCE VM too, because it works similarly across the different run environments. We can alias a task within a Whittle script, and that's if we want to duplicate the run of it really quickly and easily, and that's what we just saw. We could also import a task from one Whittle script to another, and that's something that I do really commonly, again, to separate out the scripts to make them easier to read. And we'll see an example of that, and that's when you want to run it in a top level Whittle, and that's sometimes called a, a sub-workflow. So I think of it as importing a task, but I see it written as sub-workflows. Of course, you could be fancy, and you could both import and alias a task, and uh, I'll show you an example of that as well, so you can run as well as duplicate. So let's go over to our GCE uh, SSH con connection, and let's take a look at some of these examples. Let me make this full screen so it's a little bit easier. And I have already set up the files from my GitHub repo in the work directory. So the first one is that hello again. So if we want to run this, um, you really want to take note of the aliasing. So WG1 and WG2, because we're going to see that in the Cromwell output. Notice also when I run this, because the Cromwell jar file is in a higher level directory, I have the dot dot forward slash. So I'm just going to go ahead and run, and this one's hello again. And I'll scroll up just a little bit so you can see that. Can you see the WG1 and the WG2 right here? This is in the output. So again, that just kind of gets us started. Let's clear our screen and let's take a look at the next example. So hello task is really just the same as hello again, but we're going to refer to it from a separate Whittle script. So if you look, it's doing the same thing. Um, and let's look now at the higher level Whittle script that's going to call it. That's called Hello Workflow. Now notice we've got a new keyword to work with in the second line, import. We're importing the Hello Task Whittle and we're aliasing that Whittle as Hello Task. Now that happens to be the same thing as the workflow, the same alias, but it wouldn't have to be. Now in the workflow, Hello World with Docker, we're calling our aliased task, so Hello Task dot write greeting. And just for fun, we're calling it twice. Now you might say, why does only the second one have an alias? Well, when we run this, they have to be unique in the outputs. And so if we didn't alias them, then Cromwell would return an error saying you have duplicate output names. So let's run this. And if I scroll up here, you can see in the outputs, we have write greeting, that's our first one. And then we have WG. Okay, so I have one more exercise and I'll leave this as a homework for you. Uh, this is more typically how you would actually be running this because remember, for most Whittle files, you have an input JSON file. So I have a sub workflow example that uh, is similar to what we just saw, but it has the additional aspect of having a JSON input parameter file. So I'll uh, let you use that as homework so you can see the pattern. Once again, happy pipelining.